So um, I'm going to um, move the topic on to a rather uh, different subject, <clears throat> which is to talk about um, um, the next public engagement uh, project for um, the, the Academy, which is um, going to be very exciting and uh, probably the biggest public engagement activity that the Academy has actually undertaken thus far. Um, and uh, that is to um, undertake a project to open up a conversation in public on death and dying. The Academy does have a public engagement programme um, which um, does uh, work on engaging um, the views of wider society in policy work um, and to inspire and inform society with the, si the, the science that we represent. Um, so why death and dying then? Well, um, as you're probably aware, that there's a, a, a growing cultural and, and media interest in the subject. Um, and with our ageing population, um, the, the subject and the fact that uh, uh, the number of people dying is actually growing simply because of our, um, our, our ageing population um, and uh, the, the shape of that, which means that there's a real need to um, share current research, think about what the public priorities are for future research in this area, and to just sort of try and open up this conversation about how we're going to to, to, to deal with this, um, but also to try and break down um, the taboos surrounding the conversation around death and dying, which, as you know, is a hidden subject. People find it difficult to talk about. <coughs> Having a conversation about think ahead and planning for it is not an everyday matter, although um, quite a lot of initiatives are at large to try and deal with this, such as death cafes, um, exhibitions like the Welcomes uh, Collections, uh, Death, a Self-Portrait, TV programmes and even podcasts like Griefcast, which um, if any of you have not listened to it, I thoroughly recommend it to you. Um, and, and even, um, just to take an example from my own personal life, I lost both my parents this year and um, I really appreciated the fact that um, my father in particular had really for himself faced this and talked about it and done a lot of planning for his own end of life, but was also surrounded by agencies and peoples and even in his care home, um, a number of different individuals who were very able to deal with this himself, themselves. So um, uh, it's really important that we, we deal with this. Um, and in my own clinical work a long time ago when I worked a lot with people facing end of life in lung cancer, I, I did discover that the single most important intervention that I could do in, in that context was actually just to talk to people about their expectations about how their end of life might be, what might happen, what to expect. And in doing that, it was powerfully uh, reduced symptoms, cut down anxiety, and help families and, and individuals to sort of prepare for what was coming. So we need to sort of open up this. And really, it's great that the Academy is going to do a major initiative around um, thinking about this under um, what's being called the Departure Lounge, which is um, a whole project, but at the core of the project is going to be um, a pop-up installation um, that hopefully opens up this subject and makes it easy for people to engage with. Um, and the Departure Lounge is going to resemble... Um, a travel agency, um, and uh, it's going to be at the heart of it in a shopping centre somewhere in London in May next year. Um, and as the project it seems to be expanding and um, others are coming in to support it, the ability to do this is going to extend and become more extensive. Um, and we think that we'll probably be able to do this for around six weeks in May, um, in a very busy shopping centre context. Um, as you can see, there are some design ideas around what this departure man like, uh, and travel agency look and feel might be like. Something between um, um, IKEA and, uh, and uh, uh, Thompson's tra travel agency. Um, the idea being it being attractive, easy for people to walk into, to feel comfortable to come in, have conversations and meet uh, people from... Uh, the, uh, the team that are going to be doing it. The anticipation is that the footfall through this could be really quite extensive um, and could reach um, 15,000 people just through the shop front dis display um, and at several thousand that might walk in through the door. It'll be a venue where there can be many events and workshops 
and there'll also be an accompanying national media cam campaign to go with it. Um, and it will also use the departure lounge to sort of drive a programme of, of policy catalysis activity and help the, the public shape the programme on this that um, the Academy might undertake. So the overall aims are to create this both physical and digital space where members of the public can learn about and share their views on how biomedical and research might support a good death, um, to empower people to um, access both current research on death and dying, um, ex explore some of the facts and figures about um, ageing population and what might be happening in this area, um, to share views on what good death might look like and how one might choose that for oneself. Um, consider how research or the health service might need to adapt to the, the growing numbers of people and the complexity in which dying is, is occurring and is going to occur as, as um, the years pass by. But it's also a context where um, we can provide training for biomedical and health researchers um, and um, they can also um, uh, connect with publics of different ages and different stages of life. And also to undertake some social research uh, around, um, uh, around attitudes through things like um, Ipsos Mori workshops and, and other um, events. These whole set of activities um, are very exciting, engaging fellows, um, exploring a whole range of stakeholders um, that might work with it, such as death cafes, the, the hospices, some of the charities and so forth. Um, learning from some of our existing activities that we do um, and also uh, identifying an, a d delivery um, partner to work with, um, which we have done. Um, a number of fellows have already been involved um, with, with the initiative. Um, as you can see here, we have people who work in the, the field or related areas and they are joining in the conversation and, and advising on it. We have chosen a delivery partner to do the design and the workup of the space, which is called the liminal space, um, who have already worked a bit with the, um, the academy um, on this particular initiative um, called Medimori, which was um, working alongside um, the uh, Best Evidence Project, which was a, a fictional pharmacy that helped explore how the public use evidence in making decisions about medicine um, and so it will be great to be working with them on this. So the next steps, um, between now and February, there's um, the need to design and develop the branding and the look and feel for this. Um, there's some uh, very exciting news in that we've just heard that the Health Foundation are wanting to go in partnership with us for this and have just awarded a very substantial grant to um, join up with us on this project. Um, we've also uh, uh, are excited that um, the shopping centre um, that we're thinking about working with also has a chain of shopping centres around the country and it looks like this is going to enable us to expand this potentially to a network set of activities that could be nationwide. And then in May um, the departure lounge will open with public events and the workshops that I've been describing. Um, so um, I... Uh, I invite you to get involved with this, to provide some comments to us about what you think about it. And absolutely certainly, when we tell you the, 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 the dates of this, um, to put it in your diaries and please come along to visit the Departure Lounge. Thank you.